So I've got a few questions about how you deal with a board that might be planed to size, a board that you don't want to surface on the CNC itself. And in this case, I've got a union that uh, one of my customers brought to me, already cut and planed. I went ahead and stained it for him. And what I'm doing here is I'm running the spindle around from corner to corner and identifying the high and low points with playing cards. Now, the board itself did have a kind of a cup to it. So I put playing cards under these edges to make sure it didn't have any wobble as I did this part. And these parts, these cards are going to stay here in addition to the ones that I need to make it as close to parallel across the plane as possible. Obviously, due to the cup, I will have a slight low point in the center. So I'll have to keep that in mind as I go around this uh, and actually do the carve. So when I do the carve, I'll actually set Z0 using one of the higher points to make sure I don't dig in excessively. Uh, and then I might adjust my design to just the middle area and then re-zero that with a Z and carve it again with just that section. Depending on how it turns out from the initial one, if the stars look close enough to the same size, I'll just leave it how it is. So now what I've done is I've brought the spindle around from this point to that point and I've measured out how many cards it needs, keeping a safe gap to make sure I wasn't going to scrape it. You notice every section has cards. I didn't Z-zero it all the way down to the bottom. So I started off with what the the corner that I thought was the highest, this one, and I added three playing cards to it. So every section from there on out should have at least three playing cards to, to it. So this one back here, I believe, has four. This one back here has five, and this one here has four. So what I'll do is I'll subtract the three that are here from those, and I'll use one, two, and one when I place these cards on the bottom, and then discard the extra three from each of the stacks. Uh, and then I'll clamp all these down. I'll re-verify near those clamped areas um, as best I can that the gap is still the same all the way around and if it is a little off I might add some paper to it or another playing card to kind of fix that gap and ultimately that is how I would shim a pre-planed piece of material to make sure the top is parallel now is this really needed for cutouts no but since I'm using a v-bit on the top and I have a lot of detail to get in here in this um, union this is the way that I approach making sure the top surface of the workpiece is parallel to the spindle's movement. And some of you ask, why is that clamp on there? Uh, well, my spindle is actually a 1.5 kilowatt, but it's in a 2.2 kilowatt housing for some reason. So uh, it's heavy, and it's so heavy that it drops my Z when it's powered off. So that clamp has is what holds it up when the machine is powered off. And it's smooth enough with the rubber on the metal that even if I forget to take it off, it just slides right past it anyway. And then this guy here is a, uh, a clamp for my phone. I know some of you have seen the videos where I've got the phone following around the, the bit itself, and it looks like the workpiece is moving. Um, and that's how I do that there. I've got a mount that goes into the screw hole here, and, and that's how I record those videos that show the bit all nice and close as it zooms around. And then what's this, you ask? That is a magnet that I, uh, well, my dust collection is currently this flexible ducting from the big box store, and it's got a metal coil in it, and that sticks nicely to this without having to have my whole dust boot on there so that I can have some sort of dust collection going when I don't have the whole dust boot attached to it. All right, so yeah, there we go. Take care, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below, and, uh, and I'll be sure to check in and answer them. All right, thanks.